All right. <clears throat> Climbing was great. Um, now, let's get the last part uh, done. It's just a matter of building the CLI around it, and then we can leave at the 519 at the end just to have something fun to do look forward to. I'm way more tired than the, the first stream, so this is going to be a little more mellow and less uh, interactive. Sorry for that. First checking that it actually works, announcing it on Twitter. All right, it's off to the Twitters. We already have a few people. <clears throat> and yeah, climbing was fantastic. I figured out uh, my second and, no, my third and fourth uh, V3s ever. Pretty happy about. One of them was a tricky overhanging uh, that yeah, it was a lot of fun, and um, the other one was a balance one that turned out to be fairly easy. But I, had you asked me a month ago, I would have told you that it's just impossible. It was missing a hold or something like that. So no, um, had fun. It was a good uh, break. All right, let's do this. Um, first, a couple small changes. Let's bring up an editor. Bring everything up. Um. There we go. <clears throat> A 
first things first, I promised Thomas that I was going to remove the um, AAD uh, marker, so let's go and do that. I commented in Git so that at least we can go back and put it back if we decide it was actually a mistake. There we go. And then it will probably fail to build somewhere uh, just in the agate file. There we go. <laughs> All right. uh. Let's This is for you, Thomas. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> I also want to see if we can rewrite that horrible piece of stream um, with uh, a slice for a pen. Just humor me for a second. Um, it was the writer, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we can. Of course we can. Free buff is nothing else than the head. Yep. W on written is always buff, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's only reset here and here. So instead we can go rib. Um, honestly, mostly because it's an inside joke at this point, the fact that Everything needs to have slice for a pen. So there we go. Slice for a pen in here. I think it's just a matter of doing. Um... Um... Uh, fine. Uh, 
actually okay this is not actually that useful because we still need to extend it by this much <coughs> However, hold on, we can make that code uh, simpler. As far as I can tell, all it's doing this free thing here is that it's being put here. And if we put them all together, can you see how to simplify this? Like len unwritten plus chunk size minus len unwritten. Um. <laughs> The automob doesn't like my blog. Um, so the free buffer here would be len unwritten up to the chunk size. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. And that should also be the capacity of the buffer. No, 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 not strictly. All right, this is simpler. I'm happier. Um, does this still pass tests? I am so glad we have tests. Um. Now, um, next, uh, I'm gonna leave Ed to Fafanantine for the end because it's the actual crypto uh, stuff and I need something to look forward to because now we're doing the common um, line tools. <laughs> um. <laughs> From the chats, I still not used um, to how fast a go unit tests run and yeah, I think you used to um, do Java, right? These were actually three whole packages of Go unit tests. Well, okay, fine. This this was cached. That's cheating. Um, but yes, Go is great. Um, also, I'm pretty sure that everything here would have been 10 times more lines. I've seen a stream implemented um, in Java and yeah. <laughs> all right, these tests should also be uh, all be uh, parallel tests. We can do that later. Now. Mm -mm. One thing at a time. Uh, we have the API, now the command line tool. Uh, the command line tool is specified here. What's the minimum stuff we need for the command line tool? We're gonna need a generate com uh, flag, for sure. Okay. Um, dash O sounds like a good thing to have. Pub public key arguments, sure. Uh, passwords, eh, let's maybe not do that today. Uh, GitHub definitely not happening today. Honestly, I'm not wiring up the SSH. Actually, that might be easy, but not the GitHub part. Nope. Uh, aliases, not today. Uh, decryption, definitely, yes. Um, which means that we need to write a parser to go read uh, private keys for decryption. Let's start with um, the simplest thing we can start with, which is, let's not start literally with key generation maybe. Uh, let's start with encryption. Very basic standard input encryption with no arguments. 
Now, I'm a firm b uh, believer in not using anything else than the standard library, so um, comment age, age dot uh, go and package main function main. There's going to be some flags at some point, but that's not what we're starting with. Mm. So in encryption mode, all arguments are just parsed as potential recipients. We'll probably want to modularize that at some point, but eh. Um, not now, uh, maybe not even today. Uh, for Should we do anything to set up things first? No, right? No, standard input, standard output. Yeah. Hey, when you make simple specs, they are simple to implement. Is there, uh, does ORS args starting with the program name? Let's ignore that. Fun fact, um, you can actually um, just put whatever you want when you invoke a program in that uh, zeroth argument. Uh, if you just use uh, directly, I think, the for KPI or whatever. Um, which is kind of terrifying. <clears throat> um, I guess we need a parser here. Uh, let's start simple. Uh, chat asking if I sh the pointing out that the repo is still private. I could make it public. There is no readme. There is nothing in there. Eh, but I don't see why not. Um, Oz args zero is the name of the program. Uh, usually, when you, when you start it, um, like you do. If we do go build, excellent. Normally the shell does that. Um, so it, if we do this, it's going to be, I think, dot slash um, age. But the interesting thing is that the shell is just passing it as an arbitrary thing. So if you're relying on that as a security measure, that's not gonna work. Um, and if you're assuming that, for example, it can't have anything, uh, any space in it or some weird symbols in it, nope, it can. So yeah. I have a bunch of colleagues in the viewers right now and that's just a little bit intimidating. No, I'm kidding, love you. Um, it's, let's see. Um, I was about to go get something for parse recipient. Ah, yes. A parse recipient uh, should return um, uh, arg, um, string. I 
right now my um, colleagues are talking to each other and that's you know that's also um ag in returns a ag dot uh, recipient why not let's just do the whole parsing and an error yep 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 perfect now uh we only support one kind uh and that's uh if strings dot has this will need to be extremely smart uh, like extremely smarter than this um um like we'll have to be a real parser with real mm, logic but yeah not today what do we tell the god of complexity not today uh, our pub key colon um well, now that Katie uh, uh, docs herself on the chat, I can say that um, she's the person that's finally working with me on security for the Go project, um, which has been a slightly lonely job for a while. Uh, I mean, to be clear, there is a whole mailing list behind security at Golang.org. It's not just me, but usually it was me doing in triage. Say hi, Katie. Um, Uh, format RF This will all need to have much better error messages for it to be actually useful. Um, okay, so if it is a pub key, uh, we strip that part. Oops. Um, and then we take that and that should be just simply decoded uh, do we even have access to that it's internal yeah uh, format dot the code string yep uh, pub key um, uh, KR. yeah I don't know mm. suggesting strings dot trim pre uh, pre uh, prefix yeah, why not? I guess I'm the only one that finds this kind of pretty. Um, and we're already importing strings on the line above, so yeah, definitely. Let's see. Yeah, I like this better. Uh, asking from the chat why the recipient lines start with uh, narrow. I just think it's pretty. I needed like some way to specify where the lines start. Uh, so. <laughs> suggested using an emoji instead that would be just evil like i love it as the compromise between thomas wanting me to make it a binary protocol and uh, bi a binary format uh, and not text you know what text with uh, emoji <laughs> I am tempted, I am so tempted, um, but no, come on, 
We're trying to be serious, right? <laughs> um. Eh, we're already checking here, so I might as well not check here. This might be might do it. Oh yeah, also this is an interface. You never uh, take a pointer of an interface because they are, well, already pointers. hard choices what logging uh, library do I use <laughs> no not not glog um, I mean I like log rules, but for a command line tool like that's what needed yeah i think i'm just going to use the um, standard library but without the time in front of it i'm going to flag it um uh, uh flag it flag it at zero uh, set flags which one were the flags uh, just zero, right. Like I like using log dot uh, fade off, for example, um, but yeah, this is the one pl place where I accept using the package level global, the because your package main, so you get to control. Uh, logging to the to the outside world. I think the things that are already singletons, like standard error and standard output, uh, can be bound to singletons in packages. It's fine. Um, um, We already say anything that one needs to say here. Yeah, also we should print usage and there's a long way to making this a nice usable command line tool. Um, but I promised a proto simple prototype and that's 
what will come before the sun comes up that way that way okay we have a few recipients um then we can already instantiate an encryptor We've got the writer, we've got the error. Um, we'll make the override this later. Um, Is fatal the one that puts spaces between them or not? I should know this. Spaces are added between operands when neither is a string? How am I learning this today? I knew this. I knew that the LN versions always add spaces, but how did I not know this that when neither is a string? Huh. I really don't like using the um, LN um, variants for log because it always makes a new line anyway. Like, Yeah, maybe I should just use the um, um, uh, F versions. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, fuck it. There we go. It's also faster because it doesn't have to figure out it's a string. Uh, faster in this case. I'm not sure. I don't think it's faster in this case. Um, holy shit, is this it? Like, is this... A... Huh, I, I think this might work. 55 lines. Um, I... Um, 
<laughs> all right, all right. We need to add key generation because, well, we don't have a key. Um, Even if it's main, <clears throat> never have global flags. Never, ever. Just put the um, flags in main so that then you have to actually move them down your program and when it's time to test things, you're not just reaching into the flags. Yeah, also because, I mean, definitely importable packages should never have global flags. But even if you have main, uh, yeah, importable packages that just add it to the global, mm, it's bad. To the point that I cons maybe I should just be using a, my own flag set. Uh, but anyway. Um, yeah, for example, I recommend using your own uh, serve max instead of using the global one in that HTTP, same reason. probably have a real usage function but mm. yeah um, all of age is long options uh, except the crypt which has dash d and well, dash O and dash I, because those are universal. Um, which I guess means the only long one is generate because we literally don't have any other flags. Well, um, but seriously, I don't think I want any other short uh, options than dash D, dash O and dash I, because I'm sure most people can think dash O, output, dash I, input, dash D, the crypt, I guess. Um, anything else should just say what it does. like. Haven't we all been scarred enough by tar and GPG? Um. I guess we will never exit one except by fatal. We might as well not wire all this uh, boring stuff.
that will have to actually print something useful, I suppose. Um, what format did we want to print it in? There should probably be an API for this, but um, ah, flag about arts. Yes, thank you. Ahead of you this time, um, but yeah, no, thank you. Um, I was definitely missing that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. There should be an API to do this, but currently we don't have one, so I'm ripping one from the tests. Uh, I'm ripping like just the generation code. There we go. Yeah, in practice, that should probably be the string representation of a, um, of a X Y five one nine identity. I'm going to regret this, but yes, sure. Um, I can't think of any other reason you would want to print an identity in any other format. Well, eh, actually I want to think about this another time. Um, there are probably nicer things to do where the identity can generate the recipient for itself. And then we do something like we generate random bytes we pass them to new identity, we, pa we use the corresponding recipient, and then we print, you know, this is the string representation of the recipient, and this is the string representation of the identity. And then parsing this should probably also move into the package um, at that point, since it's in there. And as I'm saying this, I think actually, I'm going to actually do that, <laughs> just as I was saying it, <laughs> because I think I like it. Um, Hmm, if we already have this in the identity. Yeah, that's our public key, right? And let's have a string method as well for the identity. Which is nothing else than this. as well also have
yeah, we can also write a test that um, this round trips, but I'll write many more tests over the coming week. Um, and next we can do the recipient. Yep, there we go. And finally, uh, which is actually the code we just wrote. Yeah, there we go. And we can replace this with uh, I guess it should return a different we should still have this because which it is a uh, abstraction break but I don't see any other way just so we can be more helpful in the CLI I guess breaking an abstraction a little um, to be a little more helpful in a CLI is, is, a, is an okay thing to do oh nice when uh, imports pop away means that you have the package uh, boundaries right I love it and now uh, generating is just a matter of doing uh, how many times have I written the snippets now not even adding anything because that's just not allowed to happen uh, like that's that just doesn't happen also can't happen I guess we could just make these both internals ah, I don't know what I was doing here all right and now we can do printf of um, first the time what I assume go calls time dot RFC something yeah this one the only real uh, timestamp format um, I don't 
not really know how to use this. Um, oh my god, these are so many. Uh, Marshall, serialize, format, format. Yeah, no, I'm very happy with this. I'm, I'm glad we did it. Um, yeah, I'm glad we did it like this very much. Uh, yeah, my work. Oh, by the way, this is my f favorite thing. You can go run packages now. Yes. This is the first absolutely insecure um <laughs> um Ageki. I'll send out printed um uh, <laughs> signed prints of it <laughs> like somebody suggested earlier um yeah cool uh then we take this and we do This is the first Age file. It works. I'm actually very excited about this. This this does the thing. I with 80 lines. <laughs> I'm not sure GPG gets to the its arguments in 80 lines. Almost certainly not. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should also check that that with the crepes, but now, uh, details. Don't focus on the details. All right, what do we need to do for decryption instead? Uh, for decryption, we need to, we need to know how to um, look at files with keys in them. Uh, so by default, we'll look into this or, you know, the proper uh, environment variables, the ver version. Um, um, <laughs> decryption re requires an in-app purchase um, from the chat. <laughs> Um, asking if I fix the bag in stream.go line 46. I don't know. Almost certainly not. Um, poetic Vase pointed out that there might have been a bug in stream.go. Oh, yes, yes. It used to be your um, error equal equal nil. Um, yep. 
<laughs> the chat is getting worse. You can install a Age Bitcoin Miner D in the crypt for free, or please pr prove you're a human to decrypt this file. Um, <laughs> how to win the uh, capture wars. Uh, okay, we need the ability to scan a uh, file for secret keys. Uh, and then we take the names of the files which can contain the keys on the um, um, on the common line or if there are none specified we look at um, at the default config folder let's do the explicit case first uh, and we're going to need a parser that goes through um, we're going to a parser that goes through a file line by line, and I'm thinking it just tries to parse every line as a um, as a secret key, and if it succeeds, cool, adds it to the list. Otherwise, nah. Um, so that files can just be free form. I don't know. Should we, or should we just only accept lines that start with a hash or empty lines? I guess we can start strict and relax it later if it's worth relaxing. Yeah. Uh, let's make a new file for that. <clears throat> I know I'm not writing any tests, but it's a command line tool and it's almost 11 p.m. Um, I mean, we'll definitely have comments because that's how they're generated. Um, but I'm thinking just ignoring lines that start with hash um, and empty lines. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm using identities everywhere because we ended up calling a uh, secret key an identity. I'm not sure I want it to leak into the user visible stuff. I think just secret keys and your secret keys should be it. But secret key means so many different things internally that identities feel more specific here. Um, which one is the thing you're supposed to use a scanner? don't have the name of the file fine we're just taking the file name
I should have used X errors. I realized that. Um, it's just that I don't know how to use it um, well enough yet. I mean, this also sounds terrible for our locations, but let's not worry about that right now. Uh, so text is going to remove the last token. <laughs> this is a common error mode for scanners. I guess that means um, I guess that means that um, The comment I assume means that there's no new line at the end. Okay. Um, Okay. All right, now that we have this, um, we can also have
Mm, Yeah, I should make up my mind about errors, how they're supposed to work. Like in the crypto standard library, it's not a problem. I have that often uh, to parameterize errors that match. So I guess the file name is added here. So not here. Uh, so here we just say error. I don't know, I'm not sure I like it, but I guess it's better than the other way around returning context likes errors and having to add context that I recall. I don't know. Sounds like somebody needs to standardize this. I mean, this is probably actually answered in some of the error blog posts. I should have read those. Okay, yeah, it's been pointed out that here is going to, like, OS open returns good error messages already. Um, um, they're all path errors. So maybe we just say this for here so we don't say it twice. Well, here and here we say the file name since it's not already added. Let's do that. Cool. Yeah, I, I like streaming because when I something bugs me, but I decide, I, eh, who cares, uh, moving on, somebody will point it out in chat. And it turns out that usually actually doing, the, doing it right is not that hard. Um, for example, how I'm very happy about how this looks like. 
and I was going to just hack it uh, if I didn't start talking about it and realize it was easy and definitely what I wanted. So yeah. All right, the crypt, we have the crypt. Um, Should we error out for if there's a file in which we find no um, secret keys, but we found them in others? Uh, like if we don't, maybe we should not error out at all if we find any secret key anywhere. Uh, For now, let's error out. Um, let's start strict and uh, release later. So here we can skip this check because if there are none, it will be caught by the to-do, um, you know, a load bearing to-do. Uh, and otherwise we can move on to actually calling the API. And by the time it reaches UF, that, that's it. There is no close. I think there's it. I'm a little unreasonably happy about uh, how easy this is being. That's a failure mode of the command line. I was thinking that if you pass a file and not dash D, it will just encrypt to the files, um, to the public keys it finds as a way to like specify many public keys at once. But that's bad because if you forget dash D, it will find the public keys here and it will encrypt to them. And that's kind of not what you wanted. 
maybe we can we can automatically detect that the input is a file encrypted with AG and warn you. Um, maybe. Anyway, back to the oh. Yes. Shit, this works. How do I ban somebody? <laughs> Again, in the chat, Zebra uh, being like, just no, no, let's write the chat up around it. Where is the ban button? Uh, <laughs> I suspect a key uh, file is small enough for a tweet. I should make some test vectors. Yes, Strad, you deserve test vectors. You're writing Rust. I can feel the, like, you're doing more work. Don't know if it's more pain, but it's more work. All right. Um, Um, <laughs> hi Dimitri. Um, I have a bunch of colleagues uh, on this now. Yep. Um, cool. Uh, not even sure what what next. Um, uh, I had promised SSH, so I guess I should wi wire it into wire it into this. Um, how? Uh, Atro, you know what? I'm gonna com commit this and make a and push it just in case. But also, this is a hundred lines. Like the command line is currently a hundred lines. I'm very happy with this. Um, I really wish I had defined already um ASCII armor format for this which i probably will like it's probably just going to be this is a message instead of file encrypted with aga tool it's just that i don't want people to start actually using it for email like um, files is um like armoring files is fine but i can see people will start using it for email and i don't want them to so uh Yes, I really have a license file. Um, I do not have the license headers. I should, yeah, all right, let's do the license headers. Uh... <laughs> Partially because files that don't start with this now look kind of naked to me after working on Go. By the way, this is not an official Google project. There are also no docs anywhere to be seen. Like this is so much not a finished thing. Um, 
let's see. Modified, 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 modified. I'm assuming we don't put license headers on go mod files. And this Docker file I want to remove anyway, but I guess sure, why not? Um, asking why do I assign copyright to Google? Uh, they, uh, yeah, like the contract I signed uh, to work for them, which, you know, pays for my, um, well, yes. Um, says that they have copyright over a fairly broad, it's a fairly broad entire for property assignment. And this is my own time and my own machine and my own project, but I do cryptography for the Go team. So it's kind of hard to argue that a Go cryptography tool is unrelated to my work. And I don't care as long as it's open source. Like I'm not trying to sell this uh, or like double license this or keep it closed source. And Google is very cool with uh, open source things being published. Um, there is a whole process to get, you know, the assignment if you want it. Um, there are docs, uh, you can read more about this at opensource.google. Anyway. Um, cool. Uh, I kind of want to just delete this Docker file or move it out of the way. I really don't like it. Uh, just stick in there in the root. Uh, yeah, needs to have a better experience. Um, authors and contributors files are mm, for when you have multiple copyright owners, which is not the case yet. Um, once it starts getting um, PRs, uh, I will uh, probably turn this into the AGE authors and there will be an authors file and a contributors file. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I guess I'm clicking, clicking the button. Nobody go and use this uh, until like the end of the week, please. Uh, like use it and have fun with it, but um, not. Yes, Argon too. That 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 that's not true. That's that's absolutely not true. Um, Yeah, it currently uh, reads from standard input. Uh, we need to implement dash E and dash O and we'll actually do this tonight. Um, I need somebody to make um, um,
All right. Uh, yeah, Dimitri is suggesting a custom import path, and it would be the right choice, but at the same time, I'm kind of lazy, and I count on this being distributed not as um, a Go package, but as a actual package in distributions. Um, All right. <laughs> All right, people are using it already. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, um, let's see, uh, next, uh, I'm thinking maybe dash e and dash o, uh, or do we wire up the SSH stuff? Um, mm. It's 11.20. I had promised that I would implement the SSH uh, stuff, so I am going to, but I might not be up for implementing SSH key parsing. Uh, however, if you want to see some crypto, we can do um, the, um, where is it, where is it? Um, no, the, here. The um, Edwards to Montgomery conversion to use the Ed2519 um, SSH keys. I'm kind of excited to do this. Um, Converted key is the Ed2519 public key converted to Montgomery curve. Um, now, conversion to the Montgomery curve, I wrote a blog post about this, but I don't remember much of it. Um, so we need to take the coordinates and convert it to a U coordinate. So we take the Y of our Ed25519 public key. On the secret size side, it's easy. We just re-implement the first step of Ed25519. We hash the key and we get um, the secret scalar and that's it. Um, this conversion though. <laughs> I love that we're already exchanging uh, public keys uh, on um, uh, on chat. Um, yeah, and and they're, they're easy to send around. They're, they're just that string there. It works. It does the thing. I'm extremely excited. Um, Okay, uh, enough of me giggling. Uh, the Y coordinate of uh, at 25519 key. Yes, uh, I've got no idea. Um, let's start. Let's start here. Um, a public key size is. Let's look at generate key for what it does. It hashes the seed, it does the clamping, 
the annoying stuff. Um, which I guess we also need to do. And then it goes straight into Edwards of FI19, which is an internal package. And that's A, which is an extended group element, two bytes. Uh, all right, we need to actually look at the source properly. Uh, here, SSH. This is where it will approximately live. Okay, um, what's the format of this? It derives the, um, so an extended group element is one where the values are represented as um yeah here y is capital y over capital z so what we actually want is this y uh, because it's the one from the blog post here that we can convert to a u which is the montgomery curve which is the public key of uh, curve to 5519 so we need to so what it's doing here is nothing else than doing that uh, multiplication by the reciprocal which is the same thing as dividing so yes this is what we want and okay so uh, add to 519 public key is the y value in uh, uh, I assume little engine Yeah, no, the docs of this package are terrible. I remember this. Um, uh, there should be a FE1. Here we go. Uh, the one so the lowest is the leftmost so this is little engine um, <clears throat> okay so i actually rewrote most of this for uh, together with george tankersley and uh, henry de valence for restrato 255 so maybe we should be looking at the restrato 255 implementation but i was hoping i think this will actually be kind of simple um so it's little engine it's the little engine encoding of the Y coordinate. So we have to first swap the engine as then read it into a big int, but we also have to neuter this, which is setting the most significant bit if the X is negative, uh, which we don't care about because uh, there are basically two um, for a Y coordinate, there are two X coordinates possible. And so how you store that is that you just store the bit of the X uh, coordinate. But when you move to X25519, you only use the X coordinates of that system, um, which map to the Y coordinates of this system, which is why here the Y becomes a U, but U is just the way we call the X coordinate in Montgomery uh, coordinates. So we don't actually care about the X coordinate sign. So we just need to first remove this. What is this? This is an XOR? Um, yeah, that's an XOR. Um, I assume this just returns one or zero. Yeah, it returns one or zero. So this is a either a one or not shifted left by seven so it's the most significant bit um, of the last byte. 
So we invert the endianness, we mask out the most significant bit, we slap that into a big int. Let's start by doing that so that I don't forget what I just said. Um, Yeah, the blog post uh, is, the chat mentioned the blog post and the blog post is exactly what I'm referencing. Um, all right, so first we do that, uh, which by the way, instead of this, we're going to use this package so that it still works in, um, So that works for versions before 112, but it's in the standard library and there are type aliases. So it should just work interchangeably, like context, I think, when you move or something. Um, all right, we start by um, swooping the endianess. What's the, the size of this? Uh, probably key size, useful. Something I've done wrong once and spent an hour debugging is that I wrote exactly the endianness um, inversion that I'm about to write. And then I didn't put the divided by two here. So it was going through the thing, swapping everything, reaching the middle and then swapping them again on the way out. And so it was just returning the same slice. And I spent so much time debugging that. <laughs> Although in this case, actually a better way to do this is um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, uh, doing rot 13 twice. Minus one, right? Yes. Uh, I want to use this packet. This is a go one thirteen only uh, package now. <laughs> Uh, 
too too good to pass on this uh, syntax. Yeah, I'm fine with this actually. Uh, how I want this to be packaged is by distributions anyway. It's what worked well with Mixer. Like go get is fine for us, but f to get actual usage, it needs to be in Homebrew. It needs to be in apt get. Um, okay, so now we have the big engine Y. Uh, we need, then we need to apply this formula. Okay, uh, I guess let's just use uh, big end. Mm. <laughs> I haven't used this in so long because it's kind of bad. We're gonna need two, aren't we? I hate working with big end. Um, it's the only time I actually end up using new and I kind of hate it for it.
I am cold golf in this when I shouldn't be. It's almost midnight. Come on. Um, anyway, the denominator. Um, We have the first issue from the chat. <laughs> Wait, the denominator should be one minus, yes. Uh, this is module of what? I mean, this is definitely module of something. Uh, <laughs> this is how crypto. Um, crypto goes but modulo what uh, modulo p i assume this is in the underlying field because there are coordinates yes yeah this this can't be in the field of the scalar that would make no sense, these are not, uh, yes, this isn't the field of the scalar. Oh, we need the big int representation of 25519 too. Um, uh, uh, I don't even know where to find that. Come on, Wikipedia, deliver. Uh, not this, this, I want, I kind of want a decimal representation of this. Um, well, from alpha, I guess. And this is why it's called curve to five, five, one, nine. I know that's a bit of a crime, but I'm sure it works. Um, okay, so we do one minus y, so like that. And then we do the inverse, the modular inverse. And then we can multiply it by y plus one. Basically, we're doing um, this is one minus y, this. We invert it, so we get one over. Um, one minus y 
and then it's just a matter of multiplying this by one plus y, which is y at this point, um, which we might as well put in here. And we get u. I know how to use this. I'm really supposed to know though. <laughs> and in theory, there we have the U coordinate. Now, our add to five five nine, uh, sorry, curve to five five one nine, x to five five one nine, public keys. Big endian or little endian? Who knows? A question from the chat. How does one start to learn all this? This is much less magic than it looks. Like that was stuff that when I talk to mathematicians, they eventually click and tell me, oh, you made an entire field out of that? Um, and it's, CryptoPulse are very good. Uh, set eight will actually get you pretty deep, deep into this stuff. The implementations should be readable, but are not. Um, and I'm trying to fix that as much as I can. My Poly1305 already has some of this stuff and should, teach you enough to, um, um, enough to have an idea of, um, for example, how multiplication happens in fields and stuff like that. Um, it, and at some point you're reading papers and at some point you don't read papers anymore, you skim them. And at that point, well, uh, you're now competing for one of the same 20 but highly paid jobs, I suppose. <laughs> but also most people stop sooner because, I don't know, uh, this is not everybody's uh, concept of fun. This is absolutely my concept of fun. <laughs> like, I'm actually enjoying this a lot. Um, pop. Uh, okay, the X coordinate of the generator of the curve, I know for a fact is nine. And this suggests that it's also in them a uh, little engine. Uh, so first we have to avoid making the mistake that one always makes, which is try to return bytes, which sometimes will start with a zero and so will be too short. So first we're going to make a out make byte um, the length of a uh, add to 519 public key, which is 32, which of course has to be the same as this one because otherwise there would be something deeply wrong in the world. Um, then we get, we copy, uh, no, we get u bytes and then we copy into out at a length of 32 minus the length of u bytes, which if, if it's 32 is just zero, it's at the start. But if it's shorter, it will move us forward a little. Um,
there's a bit of discussion in the chat on how to start um, and the code book by uh, Simon Singh was mentioned and I think I, I still have a copy I kind of want to check because if I don't, I want to find where it went. Um, yeah, I do, but you might notice something about it. It's in Italian. It was one of my first. Uh, it's fun for getting into this, into like cryptography in general, but it's mostly classical stuff that we don't really do anymore, so it doesn't really get you, I don't know, slapping together at to five five nineteen keys. For that, I recommend um, a serious cryptography by JP Yovason, which I don't have a copy of because I borrowed it, um, because I lent it um, to someone, so yeah. And Dan Bonnet has um, a Coursera course as well as a, a free um, textbook which is super um, um, like formal for me but yeah serious cryptography would, would be the start um, is what I put in the hands of somebody that tells me um, I want to learn cryptography uh, cryptography engineering that is um, and then CryptoPals, yeah, so I would say Serious Cryptography, CryptoPals, Coursera, Cryptography 1, which by the way, you will then um, see that there's Cryptography 2, and you'll see that it's coming in just three months. Now you're part of an uh, in-joke of the crypto community. Cryptography 2 has been coming in three months for the past five years. <laughs> We're all waiting for Godot and for Cryptography 2, and Crypto 2 will probably come uh, later. Uh, um, anyway, back to us. We have a big engine representation of the output. Now we swap it. Mm, ah, we have to do it in place this time, don't we? Uh, wait, better idea. Let's do this in one. This should be it, right? It, it's going to take the first byte. Mm, nah, we need to do it the other way around. Wait. Yeah. Uh, So say u bytes is um, 30 bytes long, 31 bytes long. Len 31, 31 minus 0 minus 1, 30, which is the second to last. So the first byte will end up in the second to last because u bytes was short. If it's short, the most significant byte should be, yeah, I think this is uh, correct. Um, And then we return out. I think we wrote the conversion. Yep. Neat. No idea if this works, but um, the private uh, key version of this should be way, way easier. Um,
we just need to check what uh, the private key is. So we take the private key. Um, uh, 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 for example, for signing, the private key is hashed. Um, no, th there can be two valid add to five five nineteen public keys, uh, and they both match, uh, end up into the same curved to five five one nine public key, um, private key. No, no, correct. There are two private keys, and they're both valid private keys. It's just that they have the same X25519 public key, because the public key doesn't have the sign uh, bit, which we removed. You saw us remove it um, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how is H... Um, Wait, what? No. Uh, uh, I never remember how Ed Fafinity works. Nice, um, Age works on uh, Plan Nine. Nice. Hold on, I want this in the stream. I'm assuming it's public because it was in the chat. <laughs> Nice. Very good for. <laughs> uh, how does a two five five nineteen work? Um, oh, there we go. There we go. The shot. 512 hash it gets put into the digest and then the digest gets put here and then it gets clamped here but clamping i think is not necessary because it's done automatically by scalar multiple uh, malt if i'm not mistaken yep yep here you go um So I think it's just a matter of um, yeah, yeah, it's identical. It's just a matter of doing a single uh, SHA-512 hash indeed, which is what I wrote in the blog post, but I kind of wanted to double check that. Um, also because the Private key is actually the first 32 bytes. Um, That should be it. Yep, the private key is going to be the same because it's a scalar and that's not on a different coordinate system. Um, yep.
However, I made it harder for myself because we don't just do the converted key and use the converted key, but first we tweak the converted key. Hmm, because I decided to make life hard for myself. Well, really because I was worried that reusing I 2519 signing key for encryption might not be the brightest idea and this might make it fine, maybe? There might be some research on um, derived wallets that you can repurpose uh, to say that this is fine. Maybe, for maybe. Um, but I would feel much better with the tweak in there. But first we have to figure out how to do the tweak. Which involves some modular redaction! Yay! Sorry. Um. Oh, come on, past me. This multiplication in the scalar field must be executed in constant time. I don't have a scalar implementation to use. I mean, actually, I kind of do have one. I just have to rip it out of this which will make the copyright much more messy. Um. Who has this one? The co-authors and Henry de Valence. Okay, now the critical question is, um, As Henry signed the CLA, uh, that's a bad start. <laughs> I'm sad. Oh, I'm sad. Uh, well, mm -hmm. such is reality of open source. They have the same license, so they're definitely compatible. It just makes. This is called the um, Christmas tree. And the reason it's the, um, uh, the go outers is that it kind of really just comes from Ed 519, this one. We didn't really improve it much. Um, yeah, I guess which parts were Henry? Uh, Maybe not a lot. I think it's just this function. We can do without it. Yeah, this magic that he knows how to do and I don't. Um, the rest just comes from Go. Uh, yeah, no, I, I know that blame is not sufficient, but I've, like, I've tend tended to the history of this, I'm very sure that. Um, um, yeah, these are all, all I think. I will have to check this. This is not interesting enough to go on. Um, um, mm. Mm. There's probably an argument that this is not a copyrightable uh, change, but mm, the easiest thing is just to ask Henry to mm, please, pretty please sign the CLA. Uh, these are all in the functions we don't use. Uh, function we don't use. 
functions when you use. Anyway, um, do we actually need this? Uh, I guess I can just steal the one from the standard library. I just know it less, but there is one. Um, I mean, this is where this comes from. It's less safe because it's internal and we don't really want anybody to use it. And instead everybody forked it anyway, because they needed to do something like what we're doing now. Uh, it's literally, I think of uh, like just pruning, pruning here. Um, SC null add. There you go. Also it's a SC null add, which means it computes uh, a times B plus C. Um, well, we just want A times B, but I guess we just set C to zero and and that's your use. Okay, yeah, these are the two functions we want. I guess that makes ag copyright the go outers. I'm okay with that. <coughs> that's how most code mo moves anyway in what I do. I don't want to copy paste this. Do I have to? Yeah, the, the file we're looking at was in Xcrypto. Um, so it's fine CLA wise, it, um, it's clean, it's just not exported and we'll have to copy paste it. And no, I'm not exporting that stuff. It's sharp, extremely sharp edge. Um, to get this done though. Um, so for the tweak we need to do reduce but this is all public stuff so this does not have to be constant time. The multiplication in the scalar field though does have to be constant time because it's the private scalar mu multiplied by the um, tweak. Trying to think if we can use anything. Um, the rule of thumb for whether something crypto should be constant time is if it has secret inputs. Like you look at the inputs, if any of them are secret, make it constant time. Don't 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 think about it too hard. Um, if all the inputs are public, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, so for example, signature verification doesn't have to be a constant time. The attacker knows both the message and the, um, uh, and the signature uh, and the signing public key. Um, signature generation on the other hand. HMAC verification though instead has to be um, constant time because the HMAC itself uh, is secret. The, the attacker doesn't know what the HMAC for a valid message is supposed to be.
Wait, can we use um, the x25519 function to do this? Like, can we just x25519 twice? Instead of deriving a new private key that we can use one shot. We just x25519 once with I think this works, right, 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 Strad? Instead of, yeah, we, we don't do the conversion of the private key, actually. Um, also, we control the spec, so we can say that the tweak um, is Clamped. X two five one nine definitely clamps the um, the scalar. So we just say that the tweak is clamp reduce that. Actually, we're already saying that because the public key we're already clamping it. So I think actually this would not work if we did it this way. This might sound complicated, but essentially what we're trying to figure out is just this. Um, normally how you do uh, Diffie-Hellman is that you do um, uh, pub key, pub Alice times, well, private Bob times pub Alice on one side. And on the other side, you do private Alice times pub Bob. Um, and pub Alice is nothing else than um, priv Alice times base point, as well as you know pub Bob being the same thing. Now, what I'm saying in my spec is that instead, the public key for a recipient is tweak times the converted key. So tweak times, so it's tweak times uh, no, well, I guess what it's saying is that the public key here is tweak times pub Alice. And likewise, on the other side, this will be pub Bob. Right. Yeah, no, even better. Um, instead of derive, we we could derive, and that's what I was trying to get that code for. We could just derive this key, which happens to be the, the key that then you can just multiply by pub bob so that, you know, one side does this, the other side does this, and it all works. But we don't need to do that. We can just apply x25519 twice on our side and get this process, which is actually better because if we did um, this, we would have to clamp the tweak because X25519 just um, clamp the... Um, yeah, this needs a fix to the spec, not, not a comment. Um, Yeah, clamping just means that it fiddles with some bits of the um, first argument. And so if we wanted to generate a thing that combined then, then works, maybe we can't even make something like that because of how 
stupid X25519 is. Yeah, but even if it is, um, I think there's just no way to implement it like I expected. Um, because if you first multiply these two and then clamp the result, you get a different result than clamping this and then clamping this. Maybe. Yeah, the hybrid pro. X25519 is bad. Everybody just switched to Restrict already. Once. I go back to the ETF to fight it its way into a RSC. Anyway, one overdue project at a time. Uh, this helps a, lo a lot because it means we don't need any of this constant time bullshit. We can just do everything in terms of X25519. We might still need to reduce the tweak though. No, we don't. That that that's handled by X25519. Okay. Strad, uh review me this uh edit to the spec. I think it's just a matter of making um The public key for a recipient is this, cool. Where tweak is just this, not that. Um, what is the extra? There was a pa uh, one parent too much already, huh? Yep, there was. Nice. Um. I wanted to write a whole newsletter about uh, X25519 cofactors when I finally got them. And well, as we said, one overdue project at a time. Um, Oh, um, right. Start is pointing out that I had spec this to be 64 bytes and then reduced because that's a way you uh, eliminate bias. But I think in the meantime, I also convinced myself that the bias doesn't matter because if it mattered, it would matter to X25592. And 
when you do final field uh, Diffie Hellman, you do it with giant biases because you use uh, smaller subgroups, right? The smaller keys. So this will just switch to 32. Um, and also private scalar converted to the Montgomery curve doesn't actually make any sense. Like that doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah, thanks, Strad. This this should be thirty two, and um, ah, I lost the edits. It's unfortunate that we're bringing in uh, 512 just for that. But, yeah. Yeah, this is much simpler. If, uh, if, giant, if, if I'm getting this right. Um. Yeah, let's see if it round trips you. Yeah. I mean, we need to write a lot of boilerplate first. <laughs> Actually, we can just have already converted this here. Uh, So let's move this down here. I don't think I need to update the blog post. I think the blog post was correct. Um, the thing that I think I fucked up was the spec, um, not the blog post. The blog post got us this and this was correct. Um... 
All right, so new should work. Uh, this is a slice, so it's not a pointer. The format is that followed by basically a next to fi one nine one. So we copy this code. Um, Strat asks the purpose of the tweak here is solely domain operation. Yes, it's functionally similar to blinding. Yes. But I would not currently trust this with privacy under key re-randomization. I'm not sure I'm following. I mean, oh, this is not a blind. This is not a, a meant to blind it. It's just to domain separate it to make it a little harder to use this as an oracle to generate signatures or something like that. Um, the tweak is entirely pu public and we assume that if you have one public key, you can get the other. Even if that might not be true or maybe uh, it would be. Uh... I kind of want to reuse this code. Strata proves. Uh, I really want to reuse the X519 uh, implementation for everything else because it's literally the same. Like the spec says, just do the same thing. Except we need to invoke this twice. So I guess we need to do a, a bunch of copy pasting. Can I hide that? What are the public keys to that we hash here? Uh, <laughs> this is a mess. Um, okay, so here we do the scalar base multiplication to generate our public key, which I think in the ephemeral does not need to be tweaked. It will be tweaked on the receiving side. Yeah, sure, why not?
bring up this track then and make new. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't need the ephemeral point to be tweaked. Um, what we need to be tweaked is the actual shared secret. So we do the scalar multiplication once with the ephemeral and then we put the shared secret back through the tumbler with the tweak. What is the tweak? <laughs> the tweak is yeah, just HKDF, it's not too bad. It has an empty secret, a salt, which is the SSH key marshalling, and a label, which is this. supposed to be this Ugh. Ugh. Like arrays, have I mentioned that yet? Uh. Mm. Come on, one thing at a time. Uh, yep, this is the HKDF. I think we just extract 32 bytes from this. Yeah, HKDF, I define it as salt label, yeah. So we just extract um, into the tweak. So yeah, their public key with the ephemeral secret and then again with the tweak. That should do it. No, I mean, that definitely does it because then on the other side, we land definitely on the same shared secret here or nothing will work would work in X5519. And then we apply again the tweak. 
just as a you know extra little thing um yep 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 um What is this? I'm starting to have very bad names in this code. This code will need refactoring, but I want to see it round trip. Uh, this might be it. All right, this might be everything we need on the Wrap side now. The identity side. Can we have our public key here? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't see why not. here would be right like that um, like that I'm not using the tweak wrong, right? Like this is what the tweak is meant to be. Even if I'm applying it afterwards, like it's associative or commutative. The tweak feels kind of useless once you reorder it like this, but eh, feels better than nothing still. Um, all right, once I have that K, I can just go and yep, same to do. This needs to be two. All dimensions of RSA need to be at 509. This one, two. Then we start slicing in this stuff. And then it's this stuff. Hmm. 
there's one scalar mode and then the shared seeker goes back into the tumbler with the tweak tweak which we just copy paste because i'm not bothered to By the way, it's a better name than this. This might be it. Yeah, no, this is not gonna work with the X519 label, though. Um, I mean, it's using it in both places, but it shouldn't. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, we're trying to round trip this. Can't say I expect this to work, honestly. Before I fall asleep, let's test this. That's an interesting error. Of course it's the inverting the bytes that I'm not doing right. Oh, I know, um, I'm not modularizing um, you. Yeah, the, um, these part of the panic is new in 113 and it just helped me so much uh, because it just told me like yes you you have a double wide thing because you just did a multiplication dummy um,
does the thing. The math was right. The bites were not. <laughs> Damn, yeah, no, I am going to sleep, don't worry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh... Ah, this worked. Hmm. All right, with this, I would say I delivered on what I had promised on Twitter. Dimitri compiled Age for in WebAssembly. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish the comment. I'm a freak, I use uh, Umatrix on everything. Ah! So cool! <laughs> nice. Is there anything human readable in here? And I never actually dug into it, probably not. Cool. All right, folks, this has been fantastic. Uh, the tool works, people seem to be uh, using it, which is just a little bit terrifying. Um, the hard bit of the math turned out to be significantly easier if I just didn't make my hard, life hard on the spec and um, it works. Uh, oh, um, did I make the repository public? Yes, I think I did. Yeah, it is not, uh, not secret. We didn't have to rip any code out of anywhere. It's good. Yeah. I have a pull request. Oh, nice. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm reviewing it tomorrow. I'm not in the state. Um, a, a useful UI in the browser would be something that you drag over it. Um, a textbook a text box with just the public key. You drag over a file and it uh, downloads for you the AGA encrypted file. That 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 would be the the perfect uh, browser UI. Yep. All right. Thank you everyone. If anybody has any questions, now is the time. Uh, just as I, you know, come down from the adrenaline rush and prefer to sleep. Check my phone. Um, Um, Strad, do you still need uh, some more test vectors? Um... <laughs> yes, okay, we're comparing lines of code with GPG.
So GPG would be um, 382,000 lions. Well, Age would be 1700. Yep, depends how you count, I guess, but yep. Um, also, Strad is um, uh, w working on a, um, um, Rust implementation, and so you should follow him in, uh, uh, for when the rage uh, will come out. And yeah, again, everybody that uh, followed uh, the, the stream today or donated to make the stream happen, if you want to send me an address as soon as I have a design for um, um, for stickers, uh, I'll send uh, I'll send some stickers. If you actually want the printouts of the first um, um, <laughs> of the first keys, I'll I'll also send that. Um, I'm going to save this scroll back. Um, <laughs> and yeah if anybody has an idea for a logo let me know um the make cert logo came from just um asking on on twitter and i love it i i have i still have i think a pack of stickers of make cert so if you also want make cert stickers mention that in the email yes And cool. All right. If there are no more questions, I think we can ease into sleep. Because I think I they will even expect me to work tomorrow. Would you imagine? Unacceptable. No, I'm not going to uh, stream sleep. <laughs> now, thankfully, um, I almost always work um, hours late like this, so I at work they're pretty used to me showing up late and leaving late um just checking if i have anything on the calendar let's see that would be regrettable nope the first thing is at 2 p.m fantastic all right folks this has been great uh, if you have feedback later, uh, want to send me uh, an email to tell me, I don't know, production quality tips and things you liked, things you didn't like, things you uh, I didn't explain well. Um, I'll also appreciate that. Um, I can close this. Remember the pronunciation is? Okay. Hmm. I'm a little too proud of that. Um, Cool. I'll upload this to YouTube uh, at some point uh, and yeah, thanks again. Bye everyone.